The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number three, a familiar passage and setting of Scripture. Ecclesiastes, chapter three, and verse number one simply declares to everything there is a season and a time. Once someone say time. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And the following verses go on to explain exactly what that verse means. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to laugh. Amen. But to everything there is a season and a time. And I just feel like in this house it is someone's time. Well... I'm going to need your help tonight, I can tell. I said to someone in this house, it's your time, it's your moment. I want to preach tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost, amen, on the significance of a moment, the significance of a moment. Would you lift your voice and would you praise the Lord one more time before you're seated in the house of God tonight? Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. Physicists agree that time is one of the most difficult properties of our universe to understand. And although scientists are able to describe the past and the future in demarcations such as seconds and minutes and hours, they cannot precisely explain time. Webster simply said that time is a measurable period during which an action or condition exists or continues. Someone said that time is a great healer, but it's a lousy beautician. Another said that time is just a dressing room to prepare us for eternity. Time is free, but it is priceless. You cannot own it, but you can use it. You can't, you, uh, you can't uh, keep it, but you can spend it. And once you've lost it, you never get it back. It's a cruel teacher because first it gives the test, and then it teaches the lesson. Time is more valuable than money. You can work a little harder and get a little more money, but you cannot add one second to your life. Amen. Their time is much like holding a, a handful of sand. The tighter you grasp it, the faster it runs through your fingers. And most of us here tonight, if you've lived for any significant amount of time, you can look back on your life and summarize your life around five or six divining moments. Moments that if you had chosen differently, it would have radically altered your the trajectory of your life. Our lives are embodied in this thing that we call time. We have daytime and nighttime and time zones. We're encouraged to manage our time and to spend our time wisely, not to waste time or kill time. Every one of us go through good times and bad times. But the writer of Ecclesiastes wisely observed that to everything there is a season and there is a time to every purpose under the heaven a time to be born, a time to die. He said there's a time to plan and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. There's a time to kill. There's a time to heal. There's a time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep and laugh, to mourn and to dance. Time is relevant. We all live inside of this thing called time. Dispensations are periods of time in which God has dealt with man in a certain manner. Or a century is a hundred years, a decade, a period of ten years. A year is only uh, measured by the passing of twelve months. A month can be a span of twenty-eight to thirty-one days. A day measured by twenty-four hours. An hour comprised of sixty minutes and a minute marked by the passing of sixty seconds. But a second can only be defined as an instant or a moment. And I've known people that live their life for that one moment. When everything they want and everything they desire and they hope for comes to pass and is accomplished, they use every second to propel 
follow them closer to that point. A bride to be spends months planning for that. One moment when she marries her Prince Charming Nasna begins its countdown to the very millisecond that it will launch its next mission. For each of these, every moment counts. And even though a second, even though a moment seems so minuscule, so inconsequential, every single moment of your life has an irreplaceable value. And for that reason, every moment is important. Every second is significant because everything in your life could change in one moment. My God, hallelujah, the Bible documents diverse stories in which there was an instant change in people and circumstances, situations where one moment made a defining difference. Matthew 8, 3 said that Jesus put forth his hand and immediately the leper was cleansed. Matthew chapter 14, Peter began to sink on the stormy sea and he cried to Jesus, save me. And immediately, Jesus caught him. Matthew chapter 22, blind men cry out to the Lord, and he touched their eyes, and immediately they begin to see. Don't tell them that one moment doesn't make a difference. Simon's mother-in-law lies sick with a fever, but Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the Bible said immediately the fever left her. Mark chapter 2, the lame man was lowered through the roof. Jesus told him, take up your bed and walk. And immediately he walked. Luke chapter 13, a woman with an infirmity of 18 years could not stand up straight, but Jesus touched her. And immediately she was made straight. Acts 16, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Acts 2 tells me as people were praying uh, on the day of Pentecost suddenly uh, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Uh, Corinthians tells me that in a moment uh, in the twinkling of an eye uh, at the last trump the trumpet shall sound uh, the dead shall be raised uh, and we shall be changed uh, in a moment. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I'm going to jump way ahead in the message to tell you somewhere in the next few minutes, amen, of this service, there is a divine moment waiting on you. What are you going to do when it's your moment? How are you going to respond? I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm going to go ahead and tell you in one moment tonight, everything in your life is going to change. It's going to happen quickly. God's going to do an immediate work in your life. I need some people of faith to help me right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What I'm trying to say is however mundane, however usual the moment might appear, the miraculous may wait to be unwrapped within one moment. It happened in John chapter 5 when Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda and there was a man there that was sick. The Bible said of the palsy 38 years and Jesus walked up to him. Amen. In that area lay a great multitude of people, the blind, the halt, the withered, and they waited for one moment. When the waters would be stirred, as the angel stepped in, and whoever was the first in the pool was made whole of whatever disease or affliction that they had. Amen. They would wait for that one moment. And one of those individuals was a man who had had a condition in his body for 38 years, incapable of walking, incapable of using his limbs, lying by the pool waiting for the waters, waiting for that moment moment and someone steps in ahead of him. The Bible said that Jesus saw him and knew he had been a long time in that case and said to him, will 
old towel, do you want to be made whole? It seems like a funny question to ask a man who's been laying for 38 years, would you like to be healed? Why would he ask that question? Simply because God will not override your will. He will not help you if you don't want to be helped. He won't heal you if you don't want to be healed. I feel the Holy Ghost talking right now. Amen. But I feel challenged in the Holy Ghost to ask you, uh, amen, do you want your miracle tonight? Do you want divine intervention tonight? Do you believe that God can do it for you tonight? Do you believe you can be delivered uh, from the chains of sin tonight? That God can fill you with the Holy Ghost right now? Hallelujah. He said, sir, I have nobody to help me. And while I'm trying to get in, someone steps in ahead of me. He had been so preoccupied with the water that he failed to recognize that the one that made the water and the one that provided healing power was standing right next to him, inviting him into a miracle moment. Time held him captive. He thought, I'm only going to get my healing. It's only going to happen like it's always happened around here. We got to wait till something's moving and wait till the water's moving. But the Bible said that Jesus said to him, sir, take up your bed and walk. There's no ripple in the water. There's nothing moving around him. But there is a word from God. It's your time, sir. If you want it, get up. And immediately he began to walk. Imagine the difference one moment made for that man. For 38 years, the most significant moment in his life was to be the first in the pool and to receive his healing. He lived for the moment to be cured. But when his affliction prevented him from moving fast enough, when time worked against him, when time was his enemy, what he could not do in 38 years, Jesus did in one simple yet powerful moment. And I feel compelled in my spirit to ask you, what if you knew there was a moment coming, a divine moment in this service, one where God would meet you in such a way that you would never be the same again? I wish I knew who I was preaching to. I'd come get you right now. Amen. But I feel to tell you somewhere tucked in the next few moments of this service, there is a divine moment where everything you've been praying for and the thing you've been asking God to do, God will do it for you if you will respond to his presence. How would you treat that moment? What if this service holds your divine moment? Take your neighbor by the hand, lift it up, lift your voice, and let's pray right now in the Holy Ghost. Something is about to change in one moment. It doesn't matter how long you've had that problem, how long you've been struggling, how long you've had that addiction, how long you've had that sickness. All it takes is one touch, one moment. And for somebody in this service, this is your time. This is your moment. This is your, if you knew that a remaining part of this service God was going to heal you how would you act right now if you knew in the next few moments God was going to answer your prayer how would you respond right now if you knew this was the moment you had been praying for and seeking God for
I feel something explosive right now. Let your faith go. Do not dictate God's capability by your calendar. Forget about how long you've been sick. God can heal you now. Sir, uh, ma'am, God's about to give you an immediate miracle in your house. And while our lives are embodied and entrapped in this thing called time, my Bible speaks of a God that lives and exists eternally. A God that's older than time itself. Amen. Because he's older than time, he's not restricted by it. He's not the great I was or the great I will be. But he's the great I am. Your healer right now. I am your savior right now. I am your answering God. I am your miracle working God. God is here right now. Oh God, if I've ever felt the Holy Ghost, I feel it right now. If his word is true, and I know it is, if he meant what he said, and I know he did, then where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Since Jesus is here, it is a divine, significant moment. Pardon me, but it's not just another Sunday night at Parkway. I think I lost somebody right there. I said it's not just another Sunday night at Parkway. This is a divine, significant service for somebody under the sound of my voice right now. God's about to turn your mourning to dancing, your weeping to laughter, amen, your brokenness to building up. He's going to bring healing. You're about to pluck the harvest that you have planted. God's given you a word. You need to act upon it. This is the moment you've been asking him for. You need to walk into your moment. This is the moment you can be healed of your disease. This is the moment you can repent and be forgiven and receive the Holy Ghost. This is the moment you can have victory. This is the moment you can be blessed. This is the moment your mind can be put to ease. He's doing it now. He's doing it now. Somebody just step into their moment. The power of God's moving on you. The power of healing has been released in this house. The miracle working power of God has just been released in this house. You have said, when the time is right, I'll pray. When the time is right, I'll get baptized. When the time is right, I'll be, I'll repent. When the time is right, I'll be anointed. God is saying, the time is now. I have given you a window. I've given you the opportunity. I have opened uh, this moment just for you. <laughs> Come on, something just broke in the spirit right now. At this exact moment, there are mountains that are being moved. There are battles that are being won right now. There is a sickness that is being healed right now. There is, my God, there is provision that was just released to your house. Come on, this is the moment. This is it. This is it. 
Come on, we got to flow in the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been praying for a miracle. This is it. You've been praying for divine intervention. This is your time. Somebody needs to call on that name right now. Huh? Come on. You need to call on that name. While you are speaking the name of Jesus, the moment you've been seeking God for is going to unfold in your life right now. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, if you repented, you ought to just start speaking the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is on you right now. Something is happening. Something is happening right now. Uh, there's something happening in your house right now. There's something happening in your family right now. There's something. It's going to be different when you get on the job tomorrow. It's going to be different when you walk in your house tonight. Because something has shifted in the spirit for you. This is your moment. But you've got to move in faith. You've got to operate in it. You, you, you've got to take your miracle right now. Through your worship. Through your praise. I know what you're saying. When's it going to happen for me? When's it going to happen for me? The Lord said it shall come to pass that before you call me, I will answer. And while you are speaking, I will hear you. As you begin to worship the name of Jesus, as you begin to call upon the name of Jesus, before you can get his name out of your mouth amen before you get through saying the entire name of Jesus something is going to happen in your body and in your spirit and in your life say the name while you are yet speaking the name, while you are worshiping the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you're going to step into a moment, my God, you're going to step into a moment where you're going to meet your miracle as you call upon that name and as you worship the name of Jesus. Don't blink or you're going to miss it. You can't miss this moment. you got to maximize it. you got to praise him right now. you got to call on his name right now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, call on that name. Speak that name. Something is going to happen in the name of Jesus. While you are yet speaking that name, you're going to step into your moment. to praise him like you're on the other side of Jericho like the walls have already come down ya 
There's something happening in this place. Hallelujah, while you are praising him, while you are worshiping him, healing, victory, divine intervention. It's your moment. 